Welcome back to ANZ Stadium on a very warm afternoon where a cracking encounter awaits between the Western City Wanderers and Melbourne Victory who dare to dream of a finals spot taking you through all the action. This is a very warm welcome to your commentators Sarah Walsh and Teo Palazzieri. Thank you very much, Tara. And as we see teams in the tunnel here about to walk out onto ANZ Stadium, it really doesn't open up for you until you get right to the edge and then you actually get to see the vast expanses of this former Olympic Stadium. Natasha Dowie there, looking focused. Melbourne Victory certainly have had the better of their head-to-heads against the Western Sydney Wanderers. Four wins, four draws, and the Wanderers have betted them just the once since entering the Westfield W League. So they'll certainly be hoping that they can improve that tally out here today. Wanderers fans making their way in early. Of course, a double-header tonight with the Men's A-League. The same two teams coming up, but our focus right now is on the Westfield W League as Melbourne Victory, hoping for favours and hoping to win out to get into the top four against a Wanderers team that are determined to avoid the wooden spoon. Pitch looking in pretty good condition at ANZ Stadium, but it's going to be a scorcher. So these teams are really going to have to guts this one out. Ellie Brush is happy. And on that note, it might be a good opportunity to take a look at how the teams line up this afternoon. Western Sydney Wanderers, no changes to the starting 11. The only switch has been on the bench with defender Alex Hyun, preferred to midfielder Carlia Hogg. So watch out for youngster 17-year-old Rachel Lowe in midfield and Lola Bonta, the American powerhouse, who has been arguably the best player for Western Sydney this season. Goals expected from Lee Falcon, the Israeli international in the number 10 shirt, who leads the line. Melbourne victory, as we heard in pregame, no changes to the starting 11, nor the bench. It means that Korean international Jun Gaiul, 85 caps and more than 30 international goals, still not enough to crack the starting 11. Melina Ayres has scored in the last two games, while skipper Natasha Dowie was the scorer, when Melbourne victory drew 1-1 with Wanderers earlier in the season. It is going to be challenging conditions today, but if anything, Melbourne Victory might be happy about being the away team because it's about 10 degrees cooler in Sydney than it is down in Melbourne. And the humidity, at least by Sydney standards, not too oppressive. There's Richie Byrne and his assistant, former Matilda, Catherine Canooley. They make up the Brains Trust on the bench for the Western Sydney Wanderers. And as we heard from Richie Byrne, he's trying to improve last year's points tally. At least he can have a laugh pre-game with Catherine there. Jeff Hopkins, time for a late snack. Former Victoria Vision player in the National League, Kat Smith and Melbourne Victory player Rita Mankowska flanking him there. Hopkins has won multiple Premier's plates and championships in the W League. It won't be this season unless there's a minor miracle. Today's referees Kelly Jones, assistants Sarah Ho and Anastasia Philokaridis, while Avril Beecham is the fourth official. Ellie Brush at the centre of the Western Sydney defence. The only Wanderers player with Matilda's caps to her name. And even then, just the two. There really is a lack of senior international experience for this Western Sydney team when it comes to the green and gold. And Melina Ayres has scored two in two. They've both been something special, so watch out for her. She's hoping to continue her prolific scoring run. So all in readiness as we count down to kick off here. Melbourne victory hoping to gate crash the top four. Western Sydney Wanderers hoping to win for just the second time against Melbourne victory who are in their away kit today kicking off in the white. Western Sydney Wanderers in their home hoops of red and black. And joining me in commentary a player who played in the first ever meeting between Melbourne victory and Western Sydney Wanderers, Sarah Walsh. Do you have any memories of that day Sarah? I don't. It was many, many years ago, Teo. Uh, and uh, I can tell you the team looks very, very different from now. So many fresh faces out there. And, and the club's come a long way since then as well. So uh, doing really good things. But I'm really looking forward to today. I imagine there's a lot of other w, w League teams watching this. And I guess not wanting Melbourne Victory to win, you could say. It does put a little bit more pressure on those teams that are still vying for points in the, in the Final Four. Here is a pass from Privatelli. Ayres was trying to ghost in from well wide and Dowie through the middle. Jada Wyman an early touch. And as we know with Eliza Campbell spending an elongated period out of the Adelaide team with concussion after the recent international break, it means that Jada Wyman and Casey Dumont today, both in a battle 
for the number three shirt, perhaps for the Algarve Cup. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no reason why not. Mackenzie Arnold's doing really, really well for Brisbane Raw, top of the ladder. She's been sounding in between the sticks, but these two out here, we all know what Casey Dumont can do, and she was amazing last week in the derby, which was just such a fantastic game to watch. Well, there were 10 minutes of stoppage time at the end of that derby because of a very heavy knock that Casey Dumont suffered, showing no ill effects either that day or today starting without any fuss. Here are Wanderers on the ball at the moment. And it is the skipper Ellie Brush consolidating possession. Of course, their most recent match here was that heartbreaking 1-0 loss in stoppage time to Melbourne City. So they have played the venue reasonably well this year. and They just need to turn it into some results. They do, and, and we talked about a pre-game. They've got one of the most sound defences in the league. They're so hard to break down. And at the heart of that defence is Wildus uh, from the Netherlands, and I think she's been a really great addition. She works so well alongside Ellie Brush, who has an amazing amount of uh, experience within the W League, so she knows what it takes to be able to you know, keep a back line well disciplined, and, and that's exactly what this back line's been. To think that they're second in the league, but they find themselves at the bottom, and obviously that tells you they've got issues up top, but... I think, I think they are lacking a little bit of quality, and that's no disrespect to the players out there. I just think that you need a bit more experience, even international experience up top. Here's Talitha Kramer taking on Privatelli, trying to lose the marker. And the cross is dealt with by Laura Alloway. Now Spranovic, down a bit of a lone hand up forward. Spranovic was making a run, but Walters across to tip it out for a throw. There is... Marushka Walters, 25 years old. He's played for Twente and Heronveen. And also in Iceland with Filkir. So well travelled before deciding on Australia this summer. You can hear Dowie really striving to get to the ball but just couldn't run it down by the byline on this occasion. Another reason uh, Western Sydney Wanderers, I think, have been so good in their back. They've, they have, they've had Labonta, uh, the American number six, screening this back line like better than anyone else in the league she's been outstanding makes it really difficult for uh, especially today if you're watching Tasha Dowie she's not going to have a free reign dropping into that space between the midfield and the defense to be able to pick up the ball free as she does some some weekends but Labonta has been sound she was uh, instrumental in going forward for the Western City Wanderers against Melbourne City a couple of weeks back but uh, I cannot talk highly enough of her in the defense and with Jun Gaiul on the bench, I think there is an expectation for Wanderers that Labonta will have a big say in how midfield proceedings run today. Certainly, as you see the bench there for Wanderers, Olivia Price in front of the bench. Alex Hewan and Jen Bissett also joining her of the outfielders. Here's Melina Ayres on the ball. And eventually the call comes for a foul, so it will be a Melbourne victory free kick. Melina Ayres is one of those players that's had, I would say, quite an interesting uh, W League season. I think she's been a little bit inconsistent, but when you see these uh, moments of brilliance, that goal last week. Here's Beard. And the cross to the near post, read well by Walters. Dowie broke away at the last second. Victory trying to reload. Annabelle Martin now. Shut down on this occasion by Marlis Pieta. bit of multi-ball going so victory will slow things down ahead of the throw both teams still really feeling each other out after five minutes neither side on top just yet here is Labonta good hustle from Spranovic and Labonta a little overzealous trying to win the ball back pleading her case to the referee that's just an example we were just talking about no time and space on the ball with Labonta around. Privatelli ran out of real estate there. And it's going to be a goal kick. Keeping her spot in the starting 11, Leah Privatelli. Sarah, here's another look at low Labonta. And this all started when Natasha Dowie thought she had a bit more time on the ball. Labonta comes in defence from behind. Overzealous here, but she always has a hand in everything course had a bit of an unexpected surprise during her time in Australia because her American club FC Kansas City 
relocated to Utah. So that contract will hold for her. She'll be finding her way to the Utah Royals in the NWSL when she returns to the States. Alex Roberts to take the throw. Fifty-fifty ball, commitment from Privatelli and Levanta, and victory. Just getting the rub in these early stages. A couple of late challenges from different Wanderers players. They really haven't been able to get their foot on the ball and find some rhythm just yet. Neither team has actually. Clash of legs. No further sanction beyond the foul, and Privatelli, who was fouled, back into the action straight away. Annabelle Martin, her throw set up Victory's winner last week. No such success this time. Talitha Kramer there on guard, playing at left back for Wanderers. Dowie the target. And Ellie Brush wouldn't let her get away. Concedes a corner, but stopped the ball flying into the six yard box. A little bit of deja vu there. That's exactly how they scored their second goal last week in the Melbourne Derby. You can see how well Natasha Dowie uses her body. And that's up against one of the best defenders in the W League. She just holds off Elise, uh, Ellie Brush so she can get that cross in. Angela Beard to take the corner. Attacking the six-yard box and no decisive header on the ball. It squirms out the back. Alloway stayed forward. But unable to keep the ball in victory possession. It's going to be a Wanderers throw deep at, at right back now. <laughs> Bit of hesitancy there from Wanderers. Almost panic as Spranovic made her presence felt. Alex Roberts giving possession away. In the shadows down there at ground level, it is quite cool, but the remaining segment of the pitch in the sun, which is Victory's left flank, is pretty intense at the moment. Dowie trying to use that strength again. The ball wouldn't come with. Now Fonson Cam. Possession given away. Koja to Gibbons. Now Speranovic, shooting range, but blocked off the boots. Ellie Brush in the road. And now Wander is a chance to try and counter. Speranovic quickly awake to the danger posed by Lee Falcon. Today we can actually see Falcon playing a little bit higher up. That's really just a flag up against Natasha Dowie on this occasion. See if they can work to actually stretch this defence. And once the service comes out, much like up the other end with Natasha Dowie, get someone who can hold the ball. A link in the midfield. Pieta chased down Annabelle Martin and made that a bit awkward in the end. Martin safety first, putting it out for a throw. Here is Marlis Pieter. More than 50 caps for the Netherlands. Quite a decorated player. Played for Ajax as well. Just the one goal this season, though. Came against Adelaide United. Would love a second today. Alloway keeping things safe and secure for victory. Roberts. Now Fonson can. Hard up against the touchline, but Fonson Cam shows her skill. The run continues. Falcon, it's going to fly across the face. And Pieta trying to keep it in. Not quite, but that was a neat touch over on the right wing from the 16-year-old in the young Matildas. Oh, that was excellent skill. Wanderers hoping to build a bit of pressure now. Labonta. Taking the game on, Pieta. Now Kramer, a question of delivery. Fonson Cam met the header, but no real power behind it. That was really good attacking play here from Western Sydney Wanderers. You can see when they do begin to move the ball around, that's all off the back of his hard work down here and, and special skill from the youngster, Fonson Cam. She's done a number on the left, left side of defence there. 
She was still young enough to represent the junior Matildas, but Gary Van Egmond liked her enough to take her to China with the under-20 team. Doesn't turn 17 until next month, Susan Fonsonkamp. Oh, we're only get, getting to see the, the start of a very long career for this for this youngster, early days, but you can see she has the makings of a really good player, a complete player. You can see she used a little bit of skill on the right-hand side, used the pace, but she didn't use the skill that had purpose to actually beat her and then gets a really good cross in as well. So I like the maturity that she's shown. Ty Bourne, Susan Fonsong camp, but very much Australian for the purposes of international football. Here's Labonta. The glancing header, not really asking too many questions of Casey Dumont there. Rachel Lowe trying to get involved in the game, another of the teenage contingent playing for Western Sydney today. Roberts committed, and the referee, rather than wave advantage, I think Labonta was pretty happy to go back and take the free kick. They get a little bit of possession here. See Roberts gets a last touch and collected by Kocha. They're getting a little bit of a possession here and starting to apply some pressure. Labonta's free kick. Waldus with the header. Casey Dumont secure under that one, even though there was a late little run coming through from Erica Halloway to try and cause trouble. Wanderers starting to get their passing game going. Labonta. Halloway with a bit of a blind header, but the teammates were there to try and help out. Shouts for handball, not heated. And now a deflected shot from Lowe is going to run out at Wanderers get themselves their first corner of the afternoon. This is kind of what Victor do sometimes. They they had a simple out. They were trying to play out from the back and tried to play up through the middle. It only takes one player to not be able to keep the ball. They lose it and now they find themselves in the defensive corner. They do sometimes make things very difficult for themselves. Fox on Cam's corner. And not the greatest clearance from Koja. It ends up in a corner on the opposite side. Annabelle Martin getting the last touch. Just an awkward height. Wasn't sure whether to try and go for it with the header or volley it away. Ended up thawing it into her teammate. And Fonsong Camp. Corner taking duties from both sides. It's going to give everyone a breather. And she runs across to send it in from the opposite side. Walters an obvious target. Brush also very good in the air. Can they get connection? It's all victory. Laura Alloway standing tall. And Ayres just bombing it forward to no one in particular. Wanderers happy to retake possession. Roberts loads up. Falcon. Now Halloway. And slight miscommunication perhaps. It goes out for another corner. Casey Dumont happy to let Laura Alloway deal with the danger at the near post. Well, I think there was probably... Really good opportunity for Casey Dumont to come and take that so they could actually set up their shape and play out. It's just these small little things creeping in. Another corner for Wanderers. And you heard the groan of frustration there. Laura Alloway is slow to get up. It seems all right. Just landed a little awkwardly on the ankle, but nothing that will require a stoppage. Melbourne Victory just trying to get out of their defensive half at the moment, but Wanderers, after perhaps being on the back foot through the first five minutes, have well, truly taken over the contest. Well, now they'll be happy with this setup now. It allows them to actually find some shape. They've really been pulled out of position. Now they're able to set up with the ball up the other end. You can see how deep they're sitting in. They're allowing Western Sydney Wanderers to play out. As you can see there, dominant possession for the Wanderers, but when you give it away like that, may not count for a great deal. Victory tried to return it with interest through Gibbons. And now another giveaway gives Gibbons another shot at it. Can she find a teammate? Jada Wyman calls off the defenders. Well, I really like this Gibbons. And you can see why she's starting in the midfield. Her runs, her game awareness. She'd made that run and the older, more wise than Natasha Dowie didn't happen to make the run. She did apologise for it, but you can see she makes things happen. Yeah, 
Gibbons again, winning possession back for victory. And Privatelli just let it roll one spin of the ball too many over the touchline. Falcon being ushered towards the corner, tried to break away from McNabb and unable to keep the ball in. McNabb did an excellent job at keeping Falcon wide. You could see she wasn't far off actually turning her and getting a good cross into the box. It looked more lively and, and a little bit uh, more, I guess, convincing in their final third today. The question is, can they find some end product? Another half chance starting to open here for low. Alloway comes across. Being made to do plenty of work in these early stages, Laura Alloway. And right on cue, Alloway again, diffusing some danger for the victory. Kramer held her ground. Now Labonta. Halloway's touch, Koja gets in the road. Now Melina Ayres. Privatelli surveys the scene. Sees more or less red and black shirts to have to take on. Needs some support. Not forthcoming. Now Pieta. Fonson can. Space to drive forward here. And now Falcon. Promising cross from Falcon, but too close to the keeper. Lee Falcon, Israeli international, 43 caps, 7 goals, plenty of overseas experience in the German women's Bundesliga. And Privatelli just getting on the case of Kramer there to the point where the assistant referee Sarah Ho decided to wave for a foul. It was a really good run from Privatelli. She allowed the ball to roll across her body and use the speed of it to get past Kramer. A bit of a pull on the shirt, but it wasn't a bad play from victory. Sarah, Wanderers have got the better of the game and they have done for the last 10 minutes or so. Are we now seeing why they are the position they are on the table? They just don't seem to have the teeth to capitalise and really threaten or scare a defence. Laura Alloway has dealt with everything thrown at Melbourne Victory so far. I think so. I think when you when you actually look at uh, Falcon, the way that she plays up top, she's she's a 10. She loves to play and she's very very much like a Kai Simon who likes to drop in as a false nine. And uh, I'll, I'll pick a, a Natasha Dowie to talk to. She's someone who will sit up on the last line of defence and really have defenders looking over their shoulder. And you can see Victory's defence are not having to do that because Falcon standing in front of her waiting for the ball to her feet. There's no runs in behind the defence. And it's all very predictable play from the strikers. Uh, Hall uh, Halloway's really good when play breaks down and, and loves the ball in behind. But I think they're lacking a player like Natasha Dowie who's going to add variety and really, you know, ask questions of the defence, as you said. And, and then obviously when they get the moment, you take it. Now the focus turns to defending. Waldus's foul on Gibbons. Is going to be the American Gibbons to get up and take the free kick. Here is Gibbons' delivery. Brush got the first header on it. And you heard the cry of no there from Leah Privatelli, but the foul on Labonta, too hard for the referee to ignore. Touch from Kramer takes Annabelle Martin out of the equation. And now Wanderer is trying to break, but the pass bending too close to Dumont. Koja tied up in knots, and Gibbons is able to save the day for victory. Stops Wanderers from taking the ball. Now Privatelli. Dowie making a run. Kramer and Privatelli continue to duel. And 
and Melbourne victory frustrated there as Laura Speranovic is whistled for the foul. Looked clumsy. Talitha Kramer won't complain. Yeah, I think it was a tough call on Speranovic. She slipped over, got the ball. Kramer was a little bit lucky there. See, victory, they, they are applying pressure, but I, I don't think it's being done in a unit at the moment. You can see Western Sydney Wanderers have found holes in their defence and been able to play out quite easily. Jeff Hopkins had been seated and pretty relaxed up to that point, but that foul call got him up out of his chair. Pass from Roberts has sold Wallace into a bit of trouble. Brush calming things down. Low. Ran straight into Gibbons' challenge. Now Spranovic. Gibbons continues to battle, but Pieta takes the ball off her feet. Could see right straight away how deep victory drop they really want to you can see it's happening about a, at the center circle where they will start to apply that pressure they're all shifting across but they're happy for western sydney wanderers to have the ball here but it is really allowing them to set up their shape and find this space in between the lines Wanderers just happy to own the ball. Still well over 60% possession in their favour. Can they capitalise? Kramer. Now Halloway. Labonta keeps it moving. And now Rachel Lowe. Shut down by Givens. And the American defensive midfielder has been really buzzing around to deny Western Sydney Wanderers whenever they try to get past. You can see that play actually started in the back line and it looked way too easy. It took Privatelli to miss a tackle and then they'd broken down two lines of defence. Fonson Cam. Still going, Fonson Cam! Oh, what a way to open your W League account! This 16 year old is a little bit special. Susan Fonson Cam makes it Western Sydney Wanderers 1, Melbourne victory nil. This is absolutely spectacular from the youngster. She's almost side-footed it with power off one step. You can see she's looked up, taken the extra touch. She knew she had to drive it in and then smacked it top left. She's placed it beautifully. Didn't look like it had the power. It had the accuracy to beat Casey Dumont. And she's taken this game on and put a team up 1-0. So much passion in the celebration. Fantastic to see young Matilda's international, Susan Fonsonkamp, scoring on the big stage here at ANZ Stadium. Would have been too young to remember the 2000 Olympics. As we see a foul here on McNabb. Maybe even a little bit too young to remember that famous night here in 2005, Sarah Walsh. It's amazing the capability that some of the young players in this league are able to break through with. And the technique is clearly one of the things that makes these youngsters stand out and merit a game even at 16 years old. Yeah, you could see that she, she'd take that touch to take the player on. And they not only had the nows to look up and, and have it, and i got to say, she actually looked quite unsure when she struck it, and it, and it was almost placed in beautifully. It had a bit more power than I initially thought and completely beat Dumont. Now, Western Sydney Wanderers will be hoping that their defence, which is second best in the W League, behind only top of the league Brisbane Raw, can hold them in good stead, given that they now have the advantage. Fonson Cam. Able to find the run of Halloway. Just trying to escape Angie Beard. Falcon, corner. They've got a bit of confidence now. You can see West, uh, Victory look a little bit shell-shocked. Just really struggled to keep the ball today. We've got Western Sydney Wanderers possession 64%. And it's not something we would have predicted pre-match. They've kept the ball very well. Makes you wonder what stage Jeff Hopkins 
Turns to Jun Gayul on the bench. Dowie marking the centre back Walters there and sending it out for repeat corners. Well, there's no doubt I, I feel they're missing her today. They're missing an attacking midfielder who's going to stand up and, and really demand the ball in the midfield. They, they really haven't had options off the ball. The defence are looking up and not been able to see a, a straightforward pass, to be honest. And the only option is to be, to be kick it long. You heard the shout of keepers. Casey Dumont punching it away. And the fresh air swing from Ayres means it's going to go out for a Wanderers throw. Victory will no doubt turn to Molina Ayres to try and find them an equaliser, but right now avoiding a 2-0 deficit, the priority. Ball bouncing at an awkward height in the area. Falcon. Now Kramer. Hooks the cross. McNabb, a loose touch. Ayres is able to make it work. Now Roberts. Battle in the air. Beard gets the better of Pieta. Gibbons caught on a one on two. Given away by Fonson Cam. And now Spiranovic. Dowie the focal point, but Ellie Brush is there to clean up. And now low. Halloway. Victory defence being stretched. Still Halloway. Wants the left foot. And then the look away pass to Falcon. Now Kramer. On the right foot, Talitha Kramer. And on the half volley, Casey Dumont is able to collect. You can see they're just looking so much more confident with the ball at their feet in attack. On the edge of the box, the Western Sydney Wanderers, Halloway does a beautiful cut behind and lays it off. They've just got options off the ball. It's a loose touch from Lowe to just give Victory a bit of a reprieve here. Dowie straight to Labonta. Waldus. Halloway's timed the run. Stays on side. Now Labonta. Kramer. A lot of time spent in the attacking half for the Wanderers left back. And Labonta. Well, neither a cross nor a pass nor a shot in the end as it drifts out. It was a wrong, wrong option in the end. But I like the movement beforehand. You can see that quick ball from uh, Walters. Get to see the goal again. It was, it was quite strange technique. I thought she was actually going to try place it and, and it got a little bit of height and it had enough power to beat DeMont. You can see uh, what I loved about that play was that she backed herself. She had to beat a player to get in the position to be able to have the shot. It just got an amazing wealth of confidence, these youngsters. And a fair bit to Rich Byrne down on the sidelines as well. Victory trying to engineer a response. Givens. It's been at the heart of a lot of attacking and defensive today. And wins the throw on this occasion. Jeff Hopkins encouraging his players up the pitch. And now Beard's turn to win a throw. Dowie trying to turn out of a one on three. Tall order. And now a pile up of bodies is going to leave an opening for Rachel Lowe. Still Lowe on the run. Shouts of go all the way from teammates. Lowe now Halloway coming back from an offside position. And what started as a promising counter breaks down. Well, Halloway. She could see down the line. She probably needed to time that a bit better. 
Well, that was a great attack again. You can see they push numbers forward. A little bit of an overlap and you can see again victory out of shape and you find them running back to goal. You can see Alloway here had to go to the ball. Lowe recognised that she had an extra number outside. She's played and she's offside easy there, Alloway. Good call from the assistant referee. Wanderers trying to get back on the attack again. These two drew 1-1 at Lakeside Stadium earlier in the season. Again, perhaps most memorable because they had to leave for a lightning break. And of course it was just two days before the Matildas in China had to do something similar down in Geelong. They just picked a bad weekend for it with the lightning. I don't think we're at risk of any of that today. 31 degrees, bright sunshine. And Melbourne victory, all hands on the pump here as they have another corner to defend. Fonson Cam. This one dealt with by the near marker. Labonta, a good long shot on her day. Givens was awake to the danger. Of course, Labonta and Givens teammates in the NWSL. So you'd expect a bit of insider knowledge there in the two opposing camps today great ball from Labonta to release Roberts and now the cut back for Falcon Angie Beard up to the ball Pieter low brush pushing up victory eventually able to scramble the ball clear Natasha Dowie, very isolated up top at the moment. Wanderers straight back in possession. <coughs> and the slip from Roberts just presents a window of opportunity. Dowie. Now Speranovic. Looking for the run of Privatelli. And Jada Wyman, who hasn't had a great deal to do for the last 25 minutes or so with a little bobble, is able to collect. Was well dealt with in the end. She come a little bit late, hearts in mouths for the Wanderers fans here. You can see they just fit, they seem like they've got everything uh, dealt with in the back line. There's a good little ball in behind. But it's all one out stuff here at the moment for victory. They're struggling to be able to be co composed on the ball and really build up some patient build up. I want to talk about Rachel Lowe for Western Sydney Wanderers. Uh, this is a star in the making. The movement she's, watch her, keep an eye on her. The movement she has in between the midfield and the defence today has been outstanding. Some of the best I've seen across the league. She's picking up the ball, she's causing havoc. And I think she might be the reason why Victory is struggling so much in defence at the moment. She's running riot. Brush clears. Rachel Lowe, just. 17 years old, played her juniors at West Pimble before moving on to the Northern Tigers, so from the northern suburbs of Sydney. I reckon they'd be pretty thrilled at the West Pimble Football Club that she came through and is now playing in the W League and also for the Young Matildas. Kramer. Alloway. Provided a presence, but Privatelli couldn't capitalise. And I flagged it about 10 minutes ago, Sarah. It looks like Jeff Hopkins is giving some instructions to Jun Gaiul, and I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a substitution before half time. Yeah, it's, it was a tough call for him to make. I'm sure as a coach, you want to stick with a winning uh, formula. She's an amazing midfielder. You'll see that it completely changed the dynamic for them. They've really struggled in defence, but when they have had the ball, they've not had a midfielder who is, who's willing to stand up. Givens has been great, but she's playing in the defence. But they need someone in behind Natasha Dower to be able to hold the ball up. And obviously, Labonta's getting way too much ball at the moment. And Jun will do an, an amazing job on her in there. Well, the paperwork's in. Jun Gail looks like she'll be on in the next break and play. Victory will be desperately hoping it's not after falling. 2-0 down. Halloway. Over the head of Falcon, Angela Beard flashes the ball out of the penalty area and finds a teammate in airs. And then Beard's drive down the line goes out, so 
who has to leave the game perhaps a little earlier than they might have liked. I'd go probably Spravanu. It is oh, a shocker. Laura Spravanovic. Yeah. So unfortunately for her, just the 36 minutes of play. But tactically, Sarah, perhaps we think it's the right call. I do. I think uh, you needed someone who really wants to hold the ball up. I think Spravan. Oh my God, I'm having a shocker. Spravanovic. Spravanovic is, you know, usually plays well. I think with a bit more space out wide and. She's been given a tall task, especially with Labonta, who's in an amazing form, to be able to get on the ball and actually link up with Natasha Dowie. And look, to be fair to her, they haven't had a lot of possession. We're talking about 66 possession percent possession for Western Sydney Wanderers. But I think I think having Jean on will change the mindset, especially of the defensive mid and, and back line for victory. Wanderers just want to take that change in their stride. Maybe welcome Jun to the game by continuing to assert their control. Falcon. Roberts went to ground and fouled airs. Alex Roberts spent the winter with the Blacktown Spartans in the New South Wales NPL. I guess we'll take note of the fact that it was Wanderers 66% possession to 34 when Jun got subbed on. See if that changes much in the 10 minutes before half time. Wyman diving in at the feet of Dowie. The net's open potentially and Gibbons hooks it wide. Wallace was getting back on the line and out of the chaos, Western Sydney are happy to concede a corner. Well, I think she's come out a bit too late again. She was a little bit reactive. Wallace could only hold her off so much. Natasha Dowie always making things happen. Not far off here from Gibbons. But Gibbons has attacked that ball. She's been great today. And now maybe a few nerves jangling in the Wanderers' defence as Victory try to find an equaliser. Gibbons' corner. Wyman went for the ball, but it was mainly Waldus. Danger not yet averted. And Halloway, with a clever pass, is able to just slow things down. Allow the Wanderers' defence to break out of the penalty area and get back in formation. Well, if anything, you can see there that Wanderers had learnt from the earlier instance in the match where Martin was able to throw to Dowie and allow her to try and roll Ellie Brush on that occasion. Talitha Kramer jumping in the road. A bit of a tag team effort to keep the ball away from the victory number nine. And here is the duel. Labonta getting the better of Jun on this occasion. Gibbons wins it back for victory. And now Labonta again. Really trying to make a statement here against Jun Gaiul. And you heard the incredulous cry of what as she gave away the free kick. Oh, this would be a great matchup. Watch these two go at it. You can see she's applied the pressure there. Yeah, overzealous, but as you said, letting her know she's there. <laughs> Jun, if you're going to take an extra touch, I'm going to be there. Privatelli's cross. Sits up for Dowie. And desperate defending from Ellie Brush. Excellent from the Wanderers captain to turn it behind for a corner. And talking about matchups, this is one for the ages here. You've seen Natasha Dowie's done an amazing job to be able to, well, I think he's come off the boot of Ellie Brush, but you can see desperation to make sure she makes up for it. Two uncompromising competitors. Not a surprise that they found each other being very closely marked. Angela Beard with the corner. You heard a real loud thud in there. Hopefully just shin guards as players went clattering into each other. Second time ball. And this time Wyman has sure hands. A couple of leaps without taking the ball, but this time it's able to stick. Well, I wasn't sure she was going to come out and take that second one. She absolutely needed to take this one. She's going to come out. She needs to win those. See a good ball in from Laura Alloway. Applying plenty, uh, plenty of pressure. Yeah. 
Labonta through on Jun. Just trying to starve the Korean international of any possession now. Ayres. Straight to Fonsong Cam. Quick one two with Roberts. Now Falcon. Promising for the Wanderers. Alex Roberts. And Falcon! Held on to by Dumont. Just not enough power behind the shot, and the Melbourne victory keeper has done well. Oh, this is stunning play here from Western Sydney Wanderers. They found victory quite narrow. They were able to get the space and the ball in to Falcon. The timing of the run was top, top football. Just needed to get a bit more pace to find that bottom left-hand corner. Dumont did well in the end. Just three minutes plus stoppage until half-time. No drinks break out there, over 30 degrees, but not quite warm enough to necessitate a stop midway through the half. And to be honest, Sarah, the tempo of the game has been pretty good for such a warm day. It has been. Uh, you could see Victory have been happy to uh, let Western Sydney Wanderers play out from the back and sit in, hold their shape, stay, stay solid and narrow. Awkward bounce for Labonta. Back to Waldus. Dowie was trying to pick her pocket, not quite. Falcon making a run here. And the flag does go up. I suspected it might, tailing back from behind the victory defence. Lee Falcon, just the one goal so far this W League season, but did prove to be a match winner coming against Adelaide United. Dumont shanks the restart and now Falcon can't capitalise. McNabb awake to the danger. Victory out of jail on that occasion. That could have been costly. And they may yet turn it into something. Privatelli. Trying to keep her feet under pressure from Pieta. Now Martin. Dowie couldn't quite read the ball in flight. Too preoccupied with trying to lose Ellie Brush. And a little bit of desperation for Wanderers as they're able to clear the ball. Well, it was a bit, it was a bit higher press there from Victory, and you can see they're really they're waiting on uh, Western Sydney Wanderers to make a mistake, and unless you apply that pressure. They're not going to. They're, they're very sound in defence, but you can see Jun there seen an opportunity to press. I believe it was Brush. And now they found, find themselves with good possession higher up the park, and they're able to then get their, their midfield in, into a space to be able to pick up the ball. Assistant referee flagging, and saw the Wanderers' defence pretty happy that Natasha Dowie has been whistled for a foul. There's been plenty of grabbing of the shirt one way and the other. You can see the frustration written across Natasha Dowie's face. It really does bring a new meaning to the lone striker. Most of the time when you watch Natasha Dowie, she's completely isolated. So into stoppage we take at the end of the first half. Danger here for Wyman, had to be sprightly off the line. Will be three additional minutes to end the first half. Players not quite at the reprieve of the dressing room just yet. Enough time for Victory to try and snare an equaliser or Wanderers to try and double their lead. Beard <laughs> spinning into trouble there. the voice of Lola Bonta just carrying through the microphones there. On-field general very much so. Instructions for Susan Fonson cam there against the touchline. It's really good instructions too. She's asking you to play it earlier. Victory trying to step up the tempo. Beard. And Roberts 
in the end was trying to usher it out of play and Melina Rez just gave her a little kick for her trouble. One minute of three stoppage ticked by here. At the end of this first half, Susan Fonson Cam's goal, the difference between the teams. Kramer, and that one just off the side of the boot. Ninety seconds of stoppage remain. Dumont just trying to get it down the attacking end. Waldus. Now Alex Roberts. Well read by Ayres. Koja caught in possession, low. Talitha Kramer. And possession given away. And Alloway bombs that one. With one bounce out into the stands, and the frustration is evident. Didn't get quite the desired result. 30 seconds for Wanderers to try something here. Here is Fonson Cam. Now Labonta. And that pass will sail out. And if victory don't show the necessary eagerness to take the throw, they might just find themselves out of time here at the end of the first half. Angela Beard looking into the last sliver of sun that's affecting the pitch. And that is half time. Only the one goal so far, but what a goal it was. 16 year old Susan Fonson Camp, the difference between the two teams halfway through this match, a cracking strike, and it means that at ANZ Stadium, 45 minutes into this one, it is Western Sydney Wanderers 1, leading Melbourne Victory 0. Big half time team talk coming up for Jeff Hopkins. He's already made one change with Jun Gaiul subbed on. But let's get some uh, instant feedback from the Wanderers camp with Adam Peacock. Thanks, Harry. I've got uh, Ellie Brush here. We'll talk about the block in a moment. That was outstanding. But uh, overall, the first half, going well for your side? Um, yeah, really happy with how the game come out that, uh, this first half. I, I don't know if we've been up at halftime yet this season, so that's a nice change. It is a nice change. And it was um, persevered by that block. That's uh, one of the better ones you've come up with? Nah, every game. <laughs> you just don't watch enough. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, it was outstanding. Let you go for half time. Good luck in the second half. Thanks a lot. We're off to uh, a break here at ANZ Stadium and Tara Rushton and Sarah Walsh will be along with the highlights on a beautiful evening for football here on Fox Sports. We're back in a moment. Welcome back to ANZ Stadium and what an encounter we have on our hands. The Western Sydney Wanderers. They're sitting bottom of the table. They're defeating at the moment. They're in the lead against Melbourne Victory. It has been quite the encounter for the home side here this afternoon. The Western Sydney Wanderers probably putting in their best performance of the season so far. I'm joined by Sarah Walsh. Looking at how this game's played out, the Wanderers are really on the front foot and Melbourne Victory, to the surprise to everyone's on the back foot. Yeah, there's two things happening for me just briefly. Uh, Western Sydney Wanderers, they're playing some of the best football I've seen him play in, and I'm going to go and say it, in years. Wow. <laughs> the, the patience in their build-up, the ability to keep the ball, they just look really confident and composed on the ball and that's allowing them to play out through the midfield. Second thing is victory allowing them to do that. They're sitting in deep and, and they've been better when they actually apply pressure. And looking at these match stats here, as you can see, it is the Wanderers that are dominating across the board. 62% possession to 38% total shots, seven shots to three and even balls into the area there. 16 balls into the area to 14. So you can see that Melbourne victory are giving it a little bit of a, a crack. They came back into the game at the end of that first half there but what an opener it was from the Western Sydney Wanderers Susan Fongsom Cram 16 year old and really saw an opportunity and took it while she yeah and exactly there was nothing on they had she had two lines of defense to be able to break open she looks up sees the player dive in takes that extra touch forward and looks up and actually executes it 
And, uh, you know, it was quite a, an awkward shot in the end. I di it didn't look like she was trying to hit top left corner. Probably maybe even a side pass. Doesn't matter. In the end, they're up 1-0. Uh, but it, it says a lot about the, the youngsters on this team, and we've talked about it plenty of times. So much inexperience in this team. But when they've got players like that, they're willing to take the game on. Yeah. Experience doesn't count for anything. And it hasn't been just that goal there. The Wanderers have had a host of chances. Erica Holloway has been a real danger up front for them as well. But they've really... Uh, really set themselves up very well in this first half. Yeah, absolutely. This started again from uh, Fonsong Cam, who, again, beat her player. You've got to take the game on, and, and this is what it's required. They had a lot of possession, but she broke open play, and, and Halloway's another player to do that. Look at the little one-twos in here as well. Didn't come off. It was probably a little bit too cute in the end. But what, what about the confidence on the ball this team has? I have not seen this all season. Uh, I think they've broken away on a counter-attack once, and again, to be able to find the runner in the box... Uh, but I guess you could talk to Victory there, not picking up a, a tracked runner. But uh, look, I think they've, they've really invited Western Sydney Wanderers. It allowed them to have the confidence on the ball. They need to come out differently in the second half. Yeah, playing with a fair amount of confidence. And I'm sure Jeff Hopkins is having a couple of stern words with his side. Christina Gibbons has been a bit of a bright spark, though, for Melbourne Victory. She's having a fantastic game. They're going to need more from her come this second half. They are. Uh, what I really like, she's tenacious in defence and she's also... She's got the work rate to be able to get forward and support Natasha Dowie. Here, you can see she anticipated that ball to come back and to win the second ball. There are not enough, enough players on this victory team that are anticipating play and winning that second ball, winning the challenge. And, and you can see there with uh, Fonsong Cam, she's, she's done her best to actually win that. They were breakaway then, so uh, she's, she's doing the work. It's a frustrated coach. Jeff Hopkins has been on the sideline saying, make that run to Leah Privatelli, get going, run faster. He's really so frustrated sideline. But what are they going to have to do to come back into this game, come this second half? Yeah, I think the dynamics of their attack have changed uh, simply by being, bringing Jun on. Uh, Sparanovic, who I couldn't say her name in the broadcast, she, uh, I think she was a little bit lost in the midfield. She's not a player that's actually going to stand. Sometimes it just requires your attacking midfielder to just yeah. stand and find the space. Uh, you can find sometimes Sparanovic will, will run around and follow the ball a little bit. And, and that's required as a defensive midfielder, but they've not had a midfielder that's going to pick up the ball and actually create something, allow Natasha Dowie to sit up high uh, and then uh, link in the midfield. But they've got that now, and I think we've seen it last week. They come back against Melbourne uh, Melbourne City. There's no reason why they can't yeah, today. Yeah, they did it last weekend. Will we see it again? Well, I will see you at full time. We've got a huge second half, of course, coming up here between the Western Sydney Wanderers and Melbourne Victory, who are still daring to dream of a top four final spot. But, of course, straight after the W League action, a huge A-League clash taking place right here at ANZ Stadium between the Wanderers and Melbourne Victory. You won't want to miss it. Mistake by the Wanderers. Here goes Payne. Chance for Connor Payne. Tracked by Pauline's Great finish. Cool finish from the youngster. The Victory are right back in this. Against Leia this time. It's not well loved. Oh, leads to that bridge. There's the breakthrough. The Del Pierre. First time ball from Ben Kalfala. Stop it, Ben Kalfala. He's teed up another one. Besson Parisha. They just held each other afterwards. Could have gone horribly wrong. Now Santa Lab! Oh, what a moment! Very much the good luck charm for the Western Sydney Wanderers. What a strike from Brendan Santa Lab. One nil to the Wanderers against Melbourne Victory at halftime of this W League clash. Plenty of young fans and older fans enjoying the action. Teams making their way back out onto the pitch and let's get some reaction from the Victory camp with assistant coach Kat Smith. Kat, thanks for your time. Uh, what needs to change for your side in the second half? Yeah, look, we identified we're not putting enough pressure high up on the park, so that's our key point for the second half and that'll allow our back line to step up as well and put a little bit more support pressure as their Western Sydney are playing out and hopefully win it in better areas and go from there. Too easy. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you to Adam Peacock down there with Cat Smith. There's Laura Alloway. Had so much work to do in that first half at the centre of defence for Melbourne Victory. And she'll be hoping that as the A-League lads watch on, that they can lift here in the second half and find a way back into the match. Certainly laying down the law there, Laura Alloway giving a bit of a pep talk here. At the start of the second 45, Susan Fonsoncam's goal in the 24th minute, the difference between the teams, and there is the youngster, her shot finding the top corner. And at the moment, Wanderers will be hoping that their certainly much improved defence on last season will be able to hold out from this point forward. 
come in for one last huddle here before we get the action back underway. No changes to that Wanderers team during the halftime break. Victory did make one first half substitution, taking Laura Spranovic out of the game and subbing on Jun Gaiul. There's Kevin Musket watching on. Smile on his face at the moment. Perhaps relaxing prior to kick off of his match later this evening when I'm sure the, uh, the smile may not uh, sustain for the full 90 minutes. That's still to be determined, as is the outcome of this match as Wanderers get us started in the second half, holding a 1-0 lead. And Sarah Walsh, we're hoping that Melbourne Victory, for the sake of the neutral here, can make those adjustments and take it to the Western Sydney team in the second half. You see, see they've already made him. They picked up the ball in defence. They, they started a lot higher. Their back line was completely pushed up. And Jean actually applied real pressure on the ball. Wanderers fans will certainly be hoping for more of the same. Here is Annabelle Martin. Ellie Brush able to clip the ball away. Now Gibbons. Martin taking the game on. And now Privatelli. Wyman confident at the near post. <laughs> Wanderers still with more than 60% of possession in the match, so certainly exerting a lot of control on the ball. Melbourne victory. Pressing with a bit more energy at the start of the second half, as we heard from Cat Smith in the tunnel. See how long they can sustain it for on this warm afternoon. Jun. Gibbons shut down. And you can see, aside from the actual pressure that they applied defensively, uh, there's just there's not been a lot of care on the ball. Not the same care that Western Sydney Wanderers are taking with the ball. And that's how you get to 60% 60 possession. You see Gibbons in the midfield there. She had a simple pass in front of her, but took an extra touch. And if you continue to make these mistakes, you allow obviously you allow the team to have, a, have the ball a little bit more. They grow in confidence, and that's how you end up with the lopsided possession. Marushka Walters on defensive duty. Dowie. Turns straight into Labonta. There is low Labonta. Low nicking through. McNabb. Being chased every step of the way here, Kristen McNabb. And I think Lowe was determined not to be beaten. In the end, gives away a foul. Half a chance for Dowie, but Brash able to get the body position right and protect the ball. See, that's where I'd actually like to see Beard look to really link up with the midfield and, and have some patient play. Ball sliced out. Of course, a number of American connections in the game. The NWSL held their draft earlier today. And the headlines were all about Sam Kerr potentially being traded to the Chicago Red Stars, which was certainly a bit of a surprise to wake up to. I think everyone in the world would want to get their hands on Sam Kerr at the moment. Here's a chance for victory. Ayers. And it's cleared off the line. Assistant referee is unmoved. It's not going to count, and the ball is scrambled away. That's the closest victory have come, and the combination of Ayres and Dowie just couldn't will it over the line. Well, what about the class here from Melina Ayres? You did not get a better header than that. Across the face of the goal. And Dowie couldn't attack it quick enough, but it was a great chance for victory. The ball in was beautiful from Privatelli. You could see Melina Ayres before she actually connected with the ball. She knew, she knew exactly where Natasha Dowie was, and I don't know how that stayed out. Great desperation defence from Western Sydney Wanderers. 
Jada Wyman able to pour it off the line. And I tell you what, a lot of trust out there on the outer side for Anastasia Philokaridis, the assistant referee. That is as tight a call as you'll get. Victory didn't appeal too hard, so maybe they've made peace with the fact that they just couldn't get it over the line. However, Wanderers on notice. I think they'd be happy with the movement. And the ball was good as well. Really struggled with their service. Can they continue the momentum? Dowie. Still Dowie. Natasha Dowie. Outstanding goal. Melbourne victory get their equaliser. And after a first half persisting with no luck, Natasha Dowie has shown her class. It's 1-1. One, one. Well, this is absolutely textbook stuff here from Natasha Dowie. Holds up the ball better than anyone else in the W League. Rolls her defender. And that defender is Walders, who's been outstanding this season. And then finishes it top left corner. You can see she... Pushes back into the defender to keep that space, allow the ball to be able to sit up perfectly. And then connects beautifully, and the timing was amazing. And you can see the passion. She's got a team back into this match. The Wanderers' defence finally breached. They couldn't have got much closer to conceding an equaliser just moments before. And Natasha Dowie continuing the run of outstanding goals today with her two of the highest quality. And you feel for Marushka Walters there. Ellie Brush takes one play off from defending Natasha Dowie. And Walters gets rolled and beaten. It's a really good point. Ellie Brush is one of the hardest defenders to roll. And that's from experience. She stays tight, but not too tight. Wanderers want an instant response. Labonta doesn't get any purchase on that one as it sails out. Well, we have a game now. Melbourne victory will be believing. They came from a goal down to beat Melbourne City last week. You can see that was just individual class here from Natasha Dowie. Wonder Western Sydney Wanderers had enough players back. They'd picked up the second option off the ball. You can see with a world-class player like Natasha Dowie, not only turns her player, she finishes it. Halloway wins the corner off McNabb. As you can see there, Melbourne victory of pretty much spun possession on its head through the seven minutes of the second half so far. Corner taken short. Low and Fonson Cam. Unable to beat Privatelli. Labonta. Tipped away by Dumont. Didn't want to try and grab it with Halloway right there, but it has fallen kindly. Guljan Koja. And now Annabelle Martin. Victory. Not quite out of trouble. There's an opportunity there for McNabb to actually play Kocha, but Kocha didn't want it. She found space, and, and it's just it's so bizarre because they had a quick outlet through the midfield. She does such ama an amazing job in defence, but I attack, I just I feel like she probably doesn't back herself to be able to have that ball in that tight space. So they were able to add that to their game. Now Victory trying to apply more pressure. Brush. Privatelli committed. Now Jun. Makes Gibbons work. Back to Angie Beard. Movement of the ball from Victory to find Annabelle Martin. Koja, Gibbons, Martin again, 
Trivatelli trying to find a way past Aletha Kramer. Can't do so. It was good defence there from Kramer. She's really, really, really sound, especially in attack. You can see how high and wide she starts. Which allows that, which allows it opens up uh, there the space for the, for the midfield. A couple of players gave up on the ball there, thinking it may have been out. Not so. Wanderers win a throw. on Cam and Halloway. Labonta. Koja able to jump through. And now Jun gets the better of Labonta and victory have a three on three. Jun. Now Privatelli and Waldus coming across. Able to close Privatelli down. Skimming off the head of Beard and Lee Falcon trying to motor, but McNabb had position. You can see Victory starting to swing this possession back, looking much, much more comfortable on the ball. And their starting position is so much higher than it was in the first half. Something else I've noticed is just the desire to be able to win the second ball. See Melina Ayres tracking back and making sure that she makes that extra tackle. It's been no easy outlets for West Sydney Wanderers. Kramer. Case in point. Nothing easy allowed there. Privatelli sliding in. Working so hard as well. Brush. Wallace does like a long ball. Ops short on this occasion. Roberts. Jun trying to press Labonta. Now Pieta. And Labonta fouled by Jun. Get Labonta, these two. Absolutely loving this matchup in the midfield. And it really has just whoever wins the battle there. That's where the attack starts. Low. Now Falcon. Beard is able to prevail. Fonts on can. Falcon. Levanta's pass, McNabb hooking it away. Flag up against Rachel Lowe, sneaking offside. You can see uh, Jeff Hopkins has asked his bench to warm up. He has Karakuni Cross as well, looking over. Love to see her play in the midfield. She definitely had some spark up top with Jun. Really apply a little bit more pressure on this back line for the Western Sydney Wanderers. We have seen, seen him bring her on out wide and replacement for Privatelli or Ayres. It's interesting to see what he does here. Pieter. Levanta looking for an opening. Creating one of her own. And Labonta fires just wide. Has a good long shot, low Labonta, but that one tumbled left of the post. She's been good in attack today. She's really been the outlet for them. She could see there wasn't enough pressure applied. So she hooked it. Right on the line for Wanderers after Adelaide beat Newcastle last week. It certainly 
changed the situation for the wooden spoon race. Foul paid here. The record number of points to finish last in the W League is nine. Victory set that last season. If Wanderers were to win today, they'd move to ten. So where if you ever needed evidence of how close the league is, it's that the bottom teams are all entering record points tally territory. Ayers. Waiting for support. Jun. Now Koja. And Victory happy to go all the way back to their keeper. there of Jeff Hopkins saying you've got to threaten them asking for more out of his team's press they're going to get the ball back here regardless Beard well again some really mistakes like that creeping back into Western Sydney Wanderers game the first half there's no chance they would have hit that ball long they would have found someone off the ball to be able to create a push up their full backs and actually begin an attack from there you can see Melbourne Victory obviously have pushed up a little bit higher. Dowie trying to replicate her earlier strike. Forced wide on this occasion. Beard. Brush had to get it away. Jun was waiting. Victory just sensing the opportunity to capitalise here. Trying to turn around a deficit. Beard. Roberts able to shut it down. Labonta. Jun catches Roberts in possession, but it will be a Wanderer's throw. Halloway does well to keep her feet. Falcon has run offside. Halloway. Privatelli able to stop the ball reaching Pieta. Kramer. Able to win the foul. Amicable between Privatelli and Kramer. Do you have great tight small little touches on the ball, Kramer? Surprised we haven't actually heard a lot about her this season, but I'm, I'm really like her on the ball. She created this free kick. Which Brush takes. And Alloway, again, another towering header. It's been exceptional in the air so far. Labonta and... That's a cynical foul from Guljan Koja. Maybe a little fortunate not to become the first player to receive a yellow card today. Yeah, she really just needed to try and get on onside a goal or allow her teammates to push up. Gibbons was right there. And Labonta not wasting any time. Halloway, it's going to sit up for Falcon. And at the far post, Pieta just a step shy. Rolling out with a touch off a victory player for a corner. There was some really good movement here from Falcon. If you get to see her run, she held up it off, anticipating Halloway to win that. Snuck in and couldn't get a shot on target. Piette at the back, eluding her. Plenty of numbers in the penalty area for Wanderers. And Natasha Dowie is able to win the header on this occasion. Martin just bombs it out. Happy to clear. Game swinging back and forth at the moment. Now it's Wanderer's turn to try and force the issue. Waldus. Alloway wins the header. 
Neat spin on the ball from Jun, but still ended up giving possession away. Gibbons able to clean up. Victory looking a bit hurried at the moment. Kramer. Right-footed cross from Kramer. Alloway just a magnet to the ball at the moment. Labonta. Rachel Lowe. Von Song Cam. And that one just slides out for a goal kick. What you asked about Talitha Kramer. Didn't make her debut until this year at 26 years old, Sarah Walsh. And was playing NPL with the Illawarra Stingrays. It's a, a bit like Erica Halloway, who didn't make her Wanderers debut until she was 28. It's a great story when someone who's been playing football all their life eventually is able to crack the National League especially when at that age very few players ever get that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. It says a lot about the, the women's NPL, the underpinning league, under the W League. She's been a really sound left back in, a, in what's been the second best defence in the W League. So I like what she adds in attack. I love her runs and movement. She's tenacious off the ball. See, she's she seems to be right-footed. She's going to look to cut back in. She puts a good cross in too. Dowie's come very deep here to help out. Oh, Victory perhaps just sensing that they need a bit of support with Wanderers currently on top. Beard. Wyman initially lured out of the penalty area, but the risk not too great. Wanderers yet to turn to their bench, their subs warming up. Jen Bissett, who can play on a wing or a wing back. Olivia Price, a central midfielder, and Alex Hewn, who's a central defender. Melbourne Victory still have Alex Gummer, who can play in defence or midfield, and Kara Cooney Cross, who Sarah Walsh mentioned. We'd love to see at some stage today, the young forward. Well, at the moment, they're playing with two defensive mids, and uh, someone like Kocha, really, really safe player, really sound in defence. One of, the, one of the best defenders going around, the W League defenders. But she's a safe player. She's always going to look to play backwards. Someone like a Kara Cooney cross. Yeah, they put Gibbons back in alone and play an 8 and a 10. Put Kara Cooney, Cooney cross with Jean. See what they can do. Halloway timed her run well. And there's no one there. Casey Dumont able to hold the ball above Lee Falcon. of running Halloway. <laughs> Fonson Cam. Now Roberts. Halloway, loose touch. It's going to run out for a goal kick. I'm hearing some really simple instructions coming from the victory bench. We've got Jeff Hopkins yelling out. There's no urgency in the way in which they get back in their, their resting position. They're all walking back. He's asking for more urgency to get into shape. Especially when they don't have the ball, their rest defence. Early ball from Kramer. Low against Gibbons. And the nudge from Rachel Lowe is paid as a foul. Not happy about the call. You can see anywhere there's a 50-50 challenge to be made. Gibbons is there. Is that a, a good sell there from Christina Gibbons or do you like the, uh, the foul call there? Uh, could have went either way, but I think, uh, in fact, it looked all too easy for Lowe. She looked a bit, a little bit, little bit guilty too when she looked up. You've got to wonder where, where was the right back then when Gibbons was making that cover defence run? You could see Laura Alloway was out there as well. They were quite exposed. 
Lowe did get a good touch on it. They're out. Falcon. Good pass. Releasing Pieter. And now Marlis Pieter. Taking on the victory defence. Falcon. Lowe's at the fall. And scuffed the shot. No real power behind it. Oh, she's seen a name in lights. Couldn't connect with the ball. But the cross from Falcon was excellent. And now Victory trying to stretch the game. Privatelli. Dowie ran wide. Privatelli finds Martin. And here is Natasha Dowie, unable to keep the ball. 20 minutes plus stoppage to go. Wanderers getting ready to make their first change, and it is the former W League winner with Canberra United, Jen Bissett, who is going to come on. And breaking towards the bench is Alex Roberts. So you suspect that's fresh legs, like for like. Alex Roberts has been playing it right back. And Jen Bissett, who was over in Finland most recently, now back in the W League with Western Sydney, comes into the game. They've definitely had a lot of ball on the left-hand side, Western Sydney Wanderers. Roberts has done an amazing job in defence. I think they'll probably look for Bissett to, to start a little bit higher and get joining in in the attack. So first change going through for the Wanderers then. One sub each for both teams. Draw doesn't really help Victory's cause. And their outside shot for the top four, nor does a draw help Wanderers try to climb off the foot of the table. Both teams have every reason to go for it here. Rich Byrne, deep in thought. Karakuni Cross is being walked to the sidelines, so next break in play. We expect the 15-year-old will be thrown into the action. And indeed, here comes that sub. And as predicted by Sarah Walsh, it's Leah Privatelli who makes way. And Kyra Cooney Cross comes into the game. We'll see if he actually makes any tactical changes here. If there's any movement to allow Cooney Cross to get a bit more ball centrally. She's so good when she's she's on the ball. Give her touches. She builds that confidence. But to see in a couple of games earlier on in the W League and she'd been moved to the bench, she got NAB player of the month. It looks like she's gonna play wide, start wide. It's a very long pitch at ANZ. See if that speed from Kyra Cooney Cross can give Melbourne victory a shot at winning the game. Wanderers feel as though they are just as good a chance. And Jen Bissett's first involvement is to foul Kristen McNabb. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing a card there, actually. Melbourne victory were out at an outlet with Cooney Cross. It was completely late by Bissett and it broke down play. And they were out. That's a yellow card if I've ever seen one. Referee hasn't reached for the pocket yet today. Been plenty of fouls. 21 in total for the match. Just none of them accompanied by booking. I wonder if the desperation of the last 20 minutes or so will change that. Yes. Wanderers able to combine. Falcon and Kramer. Escaping through the left side. Only Halloway ahead of the ball. It's a lung-busting run from Kramer. And in the end, just nothing left in the legs after dashing three quarters of the pitch. Gibbons. Angela Beard with plenty of time. And that's that indecision right there. Cooney Cross needed to be played first time so Angela Beard could get that wraparound run. But they see, they almost did something in between. Yeah, that's probably something that's changed in uh, Angela Beard's game, actually. Well, I do remember when she was up at Brisbane Raw, she had a mindset that she was always going to attack. She was always going to make those overlapping runs and create that overload. And, and here she's hesitant. I don't know if that's a tactical decision from Jeff Hopkins 
you could see there, she had to just attack the, the space, played Karakuni Cross, asked for it back. You're in behind the defence. There's, there's just not been that attacking mindset from the both left backs today, actually. Both <laughs> full backs, sorry. Labonta able to wrestle clear of Jun. Now Pieta. Victory midfield able to keep Western City Wanderers in their defensive half for now. Falcon. Ellie Brush. Tight window to work in there for Lowe. Went in on Jun. A little bit sore getting back up, but good news. Back up. Now McNabb, central defender taking the game on. Finds Cooney Cross. And victory have got numbers through the right here. Givens. And now Molina Ayres. Martin. Delivery from Martin. And it's over the head of both Dowie and Cooney Cross. Looked a promising ball off the boot, but just a little bit too much on it. It was really good movement in their build-up, was quite patient. I thought Molina Ayres kind of killed a little bit of the rhythm there. They were quite intense in the way, or well, the speed in which they switched that ball out. By the time that she did get, they ended up getting a ball in, the pitcher had changed. There was no recycling of the runs in the box. Loose touch from Labonta, sorry. This touch from low, I should say, that opened the door there for victory ever so briefly. That is not. Wanderers have got a throw. Who's going to step up and win it? Could it be Jun Gaiul? Pushed off the pass here, and the referee did see it as a foul. So, am I right in saying that the last three matches, was it three matches between these two teams have ended in draws? Well, it was this same scoreline down at Lakeside Stadium earlier in the season. I did read that somewhere and then... I certainly know that a couple of seasons ago they played a very entertaining 2 all draw when Wanderers got 2-0 up and victory came back for 2-2. As the ball slides out. The head-to-head -head is victory of 1-4 four draws and Wanderers just the one so if they were to find a way to break through today it'd be a rare win against Melbourne Victory that's for sure McNabb right, you heard the uh, dialogue there between Erica Halloway and Kelly Jones, Kristen McNabb just getting on with the job of defending the situation. Look, McNab McNabb's actually been really good on Halloway. She's been very tight. There's been no easy turns. It's frustrating, Halloway. She's also not been able to find any space in behind. I think victory definitely in the second half have tightened that area of the game up. It's frustrating for Halloway. It's not the game she likes to play. Just hugging the touchline at the moment. Hard to build rhythm when it's throw in and then knocked out time after time. Wander is trying to get it central and get something going, but they can't. And indeed, the ball continues to hug the line. Beard just happy to boot it away. Territory game at the moment. This it's long ball. Now Gibbons. 
Able to shrug Fonsong Cam. Gibbons from distance with a deflection. And Wyman had to make the parry. Not a bad idea from Christina Gibbons and finds victory a corner as a result. Well, she found that she ran out of options and she just continued to take the ball through. No one actually applied real pressure on the ball. Well, I thought it was a, a quite an easy save for Wyman to make in the end. She left it too late to cover the post. Giving away a corner. But Gibbons, everywhere she is, something's happening. She's, she's found herself with a little bit more space higher up the park this second half. Laura Alloway has had a towering day of defensive headers. Can she find a way to latch on to Angie Beard's corner here? In it comes. It is Alloway the target, and it wasn't on target. Wyman can't hold it first time and then comes through. Well, they found Laura Alloway. That was job number one, but the header wasn't on goal. Into the last 10 minutes we go now. Ayres, Jun. Opening up some space, Jun Gaiul. Martin loads up, and Wyman confident, able to claim first time on this occasion. Lo hurls the ball straight to Gulshan Koja. Fonson Cam has done well to wrestle possession back. Givens ran into the referee, Labonta trying to make the most of it. Halloway surrounded by white shirts here. Able to complete a pass almost by accident. Labonta. Wanderers being forced all the way back to their keeper. Big contest in the air. Annabelle Martin went throwing herself in. Kramer bounced back to her feet. Annabelle Martin a bit more sore. Able to soldier on. Rising late, really. Not really in the contest. Wanderers trying to build, and the flag is up. Here goes out of the balloon as Halloway is offside. Yeah, there was a touch of arm in this. Bissett continuing to work. The ricochet falls to Gibbons. Fonson Cam. Low. Back to Susan Fonson Cam. Wanderers midfield sitting very deep at the moment. Labonta trying to exploit the space. Halloway. Is this the moment for the Wanderers? Met on the volley and looping into the arms of Dumont. Rachel Lowe's had a couple of half chances, but that one, again, no power behind the shot. Well, I enjoyed that passage of play. You can see the speed in which Labonta attacks the ball and really draws in the defender, allowing Halloway to find that space on the outside. Time ticking away on both teams. Wanderers will be encouraged by their most recent forward foray. We didn't see much of this in the first half. Wanderers just passing all the way back to their keeper, being corralled and closed off by the victory press. Walters goes over the top now. And McNabb able to out Fox low. A 
Olivia Price has the bib off. Wanderers midfielder will be next into the game. There's a few tired players out there. Lebonte is still working hard. And it's going to fall into the path of Halloway. And the cut across, not quite for Halloway. Yet it was arriving. Second time ball and Annabelle Martin wins the header. And now Jun Gayul desperate to get it away. Victory survive. Couple of Wanderers half chances. You can see that again they've decided to drop. You can see Melina Ayres is the only one really applying pressure, but her teammates behind her are not. And when you do that one out defending, it can really get opened up. Victory committing some numbers forward here. Annabelle Martin is just losing her balance at the crucial moment. And Natasha Dowie drifted offside as a result. So the sub goes through for Wanderers and Lee Falcon who's been leading the line today, will be replaced. Olivia Price has been around the W League for a long time, spent a couple of seasons at Sydney FC. Will be thrown on here, trying to find a match-winning goal. She's definitely a player that can stand to the ship in the midfield and make sure that they can actually begin to use Labonta was a little bit more support in the midfield. So it looks as though Marlis Pieter has replaced Falcon in the middle of the front three. And Price right on the case of Jun straight away. Givens. Labonta, hopeful ball. And the flag goes up. Rachel Lowe broke too early and was offside. A little bit of risky play there from victory. Who's going to step up and win it, Sarah? I thought that we might have a bit more intensity about this last 10 minutes. It seems as though both teams are really carrying a few tired players to the line here. You see, mistakes like that really do not help. They'd switched it early. They basically got their entire team pushed over to the left in a really good, uh, really good shape high up the park and completely kills their rhythm, those small little mistakes. And then combined with another couple after that, it creates frustration. And you can see there's a lot of frustration in this victory team at the moment. And it's not all bad. Gibbons still working, winning another throw. I really, really enjoyed watching Gibbons today. You can see what I really do like about her when she gets the ball. No matter what, where she is, she looks to go forward. When you know you've got a player like that in the midfield, especially as a striker, you anticipate everything to be coming forward and, and you get in position early. Something's always going to happen when she's on the ball. And then in defence, you can see she's sound. Loose touch from Jun, Walders committed, it falls to Cooney Cross, and now Ayres is shooting straight at the keeper, and that's as good a chance as Victory have had since drawing level. Well, that was a great driven ball in, found out Molina Ayres, miscommunication between Brush and a left back, we haven't seen that too many times. Time the enemy of both teams. Bissett. Pieter. And Beard is able to cut off the angle on Fonson Cap. It's going to take us into the last minute of regulation. And Beard on defensive duty once again. Price, Bissett, no wonder his player at the far post. Jesus. 
Martin twisting and turning into trouble here. Halloway wins it back, and now Lowe's cross. Casual from Beard. Fonson can. And couldn't find a way to latch on to the return pass from Pieta. Now Cooney cross. Trying to drive victory forward. And the pass couldn't find Dowie. Wallace, the centre back, getting forward. Fonson Cam still trying. Wants to leave a winner today, and Angela Beard says, Not on my watch, behind for another corner. Fonson Cam asking real questions here. She's been terrorising Beard on the right hand side. Into four minutes of stoppage we go. Was there a push? Kelly Jones says, Up you get. Referee saw it, wasn't interested. Ellie Brush persisting. Wallace! And could not steer the header on target. A penalty shout from the Dutch woman, and then the header. Neither broke Wanderer's way. Well, I've got to say, if that, if that had been called, I wouldn't have been surprised. The ball in here from Ellie Brush, she made sure she got it in. You don't see it there, it's on the earlier play. There was a, a push in the backs from Natasha Dowie. Oh, Labonta, what a half chance. Just donating the ball back to Casey Dumont. And I have seen penalties given for less. Well, my initial reaction was that the referee might oblige, but Kelly Jones was having none of it. Wanderers will continue to press on. One minute of the allocated four has been played. Martin hoping for Dowie. You can just see now, Wanderers not leaving anything in the tank. Waldus, long ball, Pieta has to go chasing. She's chased it down at the byline. Marlis Pieta. Price. Awkward for Dumont, and it landed on the roof of the net. Once it is a goal kick. Here's this penalty shout here earlier. If we watch Natasha Dowie. Oh, I think she might have made the right decision there. Well, a bit of conjecture. The referee has come in and set a corner. So the initial setup was for a goal kick, but Victory have had to now sprint back into their defensive penalty area. Two minutes of the allocated four remain. Attacking the nets. And in the tangle, Casey Dumont has good hands and comes away with the ball. And now, Victory trying to counter. Cooney Cross knocked over Labonta. Play continues. And now Christina Gibbon scored the winner last week. Trying to lay it off for Ayres. Is this Victory's moment? Ayres can't keep it down. Well, it would have been a screamer if it was. They push numbers forward. It outnumbered. The Wanderers' defence. Here, there's no protection here on Casey Dumont calling for a free kick. They've got out quick here on the counter and couldn't keep it down. But they looked very dangerous in that attack. Hopeful ball. McNabb has to be careful and able to steer it into the grasp of Casey Dumont. Into the last minute of stoppage we go. Will there be a winner? A draw does no favour for either teams. Melbourne Victory play against Sydney FC right here on Fox Sports on Australia Day. I'm sure Sydney FC wouldn't mind if this ends in a draw because it would leave Victory that much further adrift of the finals race. Here goes Gibbons. Can Victory win it at the death? Good header by Brush. Guljan Koja. Now Ayres. Trying to find space. Waldus. Fonson Cam. And she's away. Last hurrah for Wanderers. Fonson Cam. And Lowe is offside. Victory will hurry. Stoppage time is up. We're on the generosity of the referee. Ayres. Wins the corner. And Victory will have the time to take it. They could not have left it much later here, Melbourne Victory. And if they score here, their top four hopes remain alive. The stakes couldn't be higher under this corner kick. And 
Ayres will relent to Angela Beard and let her swing it in. This is it then. Game and season on the line for the victory. Beard's corner. And Wyman able to claim it out of the air. And we are unable to separate the sides at full time. Susan Fonsongkam opened the scoring with a screamer. Natasha Dowie responded in kind with a superb strike of her own. Two goals of the highest quality. And in the end, the teams leave with a share of the spoils. Full time at ANZ Stadium, Western Sydney Wanderers 1, Melbourne Victory 1. And it means for Western Sydney that it's advantage Adelaide trying to avoid the wooden spoon. And Melbourne Victory, well, they only had an outside shot at the top four. Now, almost every game would need a favourable result to go their way, in addition to winning their last two games. Let's get some post-match reaction. Adam Peacock is on the pitch. Thanks, Theo. Our uh, NAB player of the match is Christina Gibbons. Um, well done. The, you found a late winner in the derby last week. Um, what stopped you from doing it this time? Um, they were organised offensively. You know, unfortunately, we couldn't break them down, but we were really pushing for that one. Um, you know, a good effort by both teams today, I thought. Yeah, it was open. It was it was hectic at the end there as well. You, you were pushing. Is, is a win... Uh, the lack of a win mean strike a line through the finals, hopes, or this is a funny competition, stupid things can happen? Yeah, I mean, obviously we really want to come out and get the win today, but regardless of the score today, that won't stop us for our next, our next couple of games. We're going to finish strong, and, you know, I applaud these girls because that's what we're all about, and, you know, hopefully our next two games we'll, we'll get the result that we wanted. Are you playing well? How are you finding it with this club? Yeah, I like it a lot. I've enjoyed my time in Australia a lot. You know, I don't want to see it come to an end, so... That's why, you know, we're playing along. <laughs> as you would, as you would. Hey, uh, thanks for your time. Congratulations Thank on you. part of the match. Thanks. Appreciate Cheers. It. And uh, over here, Rachel Lowe is going to run over quickly. We've chosen her to speak from the Western Sydney Wanderers. Sorry, Rachel, to make you run at all at the end of all that running. Uh, a point. Is that okay? Yeah, I think we're happy with that. You know, we had a few tough losses where I think we should have got more points. Um, but one point's a start, but we're really looking for the three points, and I think we deserved it, but it's all right. Yeah, you, you're getting, you're finding things out about yourselves as the season goes on. You, you look to be having a great time doing it. You look like a close-knit side. Is, is that the most enjoyable aspect of what you're doing at the moment? Yeah, I think especially when you're losing a lot of games, it's, it's important to stay together as a team. And I think uh, the older girls are very mature, and they've helped us, you know, keep, keep positive and keep pushing because you know we've got three games to go and we're going to keep pushing to the last last game because we're getting as much points as we, as we can get well spoken well played thanks rachel thank you cheers and push the western sydney wanderers did here at home today but just not enough because melbourne victory you can't put it past them they do like to fight back but talk me through these cracking goals two beautiful efforts sarah walsh yeah and this young stefan song cam she's a star of the future you can see it was quite an awkward uh, i guess strike at the ball but it did the job in the end and and look she had an outstanding game uh, especially in the second half i thought she did a real good uh, really good number on beard and here's the second goal here from natasha dowie Look, it takes a really good striker. She's so comfortable with the, her back to goal. She's so comfortable not having any support to be able to play that ball to. She turns her uh, turns a player and then makes the most of it. And uh, look, that's what that's what she's paid to do. And uh, she's done it today. He really kept the uh, kept the team in the match. And uh, look at the passion on her face. She holds the ball up so well, but she's also there's passion there. She's one woman that's going to be pretty disappointed that they haven't been able to collect all three points here today. What does that say about this season? Well, it says that uh, fate obviously sits in the hands of other um, other teams. And I think what, what is disappointing, you get to see patches the second half today especially. Uh, they've got really good players on the team, but they just can't click it together for 90 minutes. The first half was was pretty poor from their standards. And they're all just small little um, minor tinkers. And they fix that in the second half and they're a, way, they're a great team. You know, but they were, oh, I'm not, sure, not even sure they were good in the first half. Yeah, just a little bit patchy there across the first and second half. We're going to hear from Melbourne Victory coach right now. Jeff Hopkins caught up with Adam Peacock. Well, Jeff, you found a late winner last week, but couldn't quite conjure it up this week. Uh, not through lack of trying, it was end-to-end -end stuff at the end there, yeah? Yeah, re really proud of the girls. They, uh, uh, we need a season was on the line here, and uh, they, uh, they gave everything they had. Uh, just didn't have quite enough there at the end. And uh, every credit to the keeper had pulled out a great, uh, a great grab out of the air for the, in the last minute. Yeah. Um, how do you sum up the season so far? It's still two games to go. You still want to get the best out of the girls for those two games. But um, with the squad you've got and, and the way the competition is, how do you see it? Yeah, look, I think everyone knows that the competition's got a lot better this year. Um, we've definitely improved on last year. We've improved in our 
points tally and uh, we're just going to keep accumulating points for the, for the last two games. I don't, I don't want the, uh, anyone at Melbourne Victory in, in our squad to think the, the season's over because it's definitely not. Thanks for your time, mate. Great, cheers. Bye. Yeah, Jeff Hopkins, he summed up pretty well there. And I'll ask you, Walsh, do you think as well that the competition has improved this season? Absolutely. Uh, I think the one example is um, Western Sydney Wanderers and then Adelaide United last week. At no point in time can you actually discount the, the bottom teams um, because they're pulling upsets left, right and centre. Melbourne City haven't been the, uh, the powerhouse they were last year. I think everybody's expectations for them have been really high and they find themselves in a good, good position now. But look, they, they absolutely need the points to find the final four. Uh, I can't remember a season where we, we really didn't have it, uh, I guess, completed by now, um, but uh, it's going to be exciting times the next couple of rounds. It's really going to be hard. Brisbane Raw sit top. Sydney behind them, the Jets City, but also Canberra and Perth Glory. They really are the two teams that are probably fighting that much more to get into that top four spot. Sarah Walsh, thanks so much for joining me for a cracking afternoon here at ANZ Stadium. Thanks, thanks so much for joining us here at home as well for your afternoon of a -Le uh, W League, I should say. A League's coming up on the other side. W League here at ANZ Stadium, of course. On the other side of this on Fox Sports, kind of 501, we've got the cracking encounter between the Western City Wanderers and Melbourne Victory in the A-League. See you soon. We're smashing mics.